Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and what I want to discuss this morning in the Green Woodworking Series is a little bit about a dovetail joint, but we're going to lash this dovetail joint, so I'm going to show you what I call the dovetail lash. Now, I'm getting ready to build a chair. Sooner or later, you're going to want to build some type of furniture. It's great to be able to make spoons and bowls and all of those types of camp cooking implements, and we've showed you how to do that in past videos. But you also are going to want sooner or later in a longer term scenario to be able to build furniture. And all along the Appalachian frontier, they built what was called twig or stick furniture. And most of the time, that furniture was actually nailed together or it was jointed together with some type of a mortise and tenon, a round tenon and a round mortise hole that was pressed into. And those things would have been drilled out. But before they had the availability in smaller rural areas of being able to make those mortise and tenon joints by having auger type bits and things like that. They could also have used nails, which were fairly cheap back in that period of the 1800s. You're talking a three penny nail meant that that nail cost three pennies for a hundred nails. Nails were in full production by the mid 1800s, so they began to get more affordable to rural peoples. So a 16 penny nail would have been 16 pennies for a hundred nails. So a lot of this twig furniture was nailed together. What we're going to do today is, assuming a more woodland type environment where we're not carrying a lot of tools with us or carrying, you know, five or six pounds of nails, we're going to have to lash these things together. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this chair with what I call a dovetail notch and a dovetail lash. And I'm going to show you that today. So I'm using a tulip poplar wood here and I've cut myself two four foot sections and two two foot sections and these are going to be my four legs. Everything else will be cut at two foot. So basically I've harvested six or seven tulip poplar saplings. I'm bringing them in here to my tail vise, just dropping them in the tail vise, measuring them off and marking them. So we're going to have to have a measuring device. For that I use my axe handle. It's marked out in one inch increments. As I'm cutting these two foot pieces I can use my axe to mark this out with, but what I've done is since I'm back in the shop is I've marked two feet on my bench and just scribed a straight line across here so that I know right here at these tail vices from here to here is two foot and I can measure everything out very easily that way. Scribe a line on it with my knife or my belt knife, lock it in, pull out the good old Bucks off and just get right after it. And I'm going to need to cut several of these, so it's much easier just to set up a jig like this where I know the measurement, I can lay it down and I can mark it. And I could do the same thing with a partial log with a V notch cut in it. And then I could put a straight line and a 45 degree line in it, and I would have a miter box made in the woods from a round log with a V-chunk cut out that I could just lay these pieces down into and know that this cuts at 24 inches, this straight cut, in the log, just like a miter box. Drop this down into the V, cut it off. Line it up every time at the end, cut it off. Very simple way to make a jig in the woods if I needed to. Okay, so let's talk about this joint real quick. We've got two front legs here that are going to have to have a cross support between them here. So we'll have the two front legs with something in between them here and the chair will be about this wide when we're done. Okay, This is where the dovetail notch comes in and the lashing if we're not going to bore holes into our wood. Okay. My two largest diameter pieces that I have are going to be my two front legs. And again, we talked about we have to put a support in between those legs. So we've got to choose which one of these is going to be our support at the top. And it needs to be fairly thick, so we're going to be sitting on it. So we're going to use something like this one here across the top. 
And this width is important. Now, <clears throat> I've already got a line marked on the bench here that I can slide these up against and give myself a space here. So I'm gonna take advantage of that space and use that as a center line for my dovetail joints. So now what I want to do is I want to take this piece of wood and cut a dovetail joint, initially a dovetail, on both ends of this and then I'll match it up to a notch. I'm going to use a black marker here so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. But what I want is I want a flat here on one side and then I want basically a triangle here just like this. So I'm going to cut this into a triangle piece of wood for the most part, with the widest side of that triangle at the bottom. So it's not an equal triangle. It's going to be a, bit, a little bit off and this will be the back waist side. And I want that notch or that tenon to be at least as deep as my notch is going to be and a little bit deeper so that I can pound it in and then lash it tight and trim it if I need to. But I'm better off getting a tight fit right off the bat because I'm trying to keep everything the same size and that's gonna be important here in a few minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our saw and we're just going to cut along the end grain just like this. And I really don't wanna go down any thicker than this piece of wood is. So what I can do is I can lay this piece of wood right here and scribe a line on here at the bottom so I know about how deep to go with my cut and I'll probably go just a little bit short of that. I'm doing all this in marker so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. And I'm using a regular dry wood blade, Baco wood blade here on purpose. because that's what I would have in the woods, all right? So I'm pretty even there. Now I'm gonna come over to this side and I'm gonna cut the other corner. And I'm trying to stay right against this meat line right here in the front where I cut the first one. Just like that, okay? Now I have two lines cut in here. So now I have a line coming down here and a line coming down here and now I'm going to cut one across the back that's going to start by touching both of those lines and go down the same depth, right down that cut. like that. Okay, that's pretty simple stuff. Now if I just take my marker and connect the dots here basically to my dropped lines and cut away the waste by batoning my knife since we're not using a chisel right now. We're going with what we would have and we're just going to baton those out and we'll have a notch or a tenon when we're done and then we'll have to cut the mortise to match this tenon. Okay, so now I'm just going to come in here with my knife and chop away the waste just inside the line. There's one. Square it up good. There's two. And there's three. And now I have a triangle here that's going to be my dovetail going into my other piece. And you can see I'm just a little bit off right here in depth. Don't worry too much about that. You can trim that down with your knife with a shear cut to get it evened up. But that's a pretty clean dovetail. Now we need one of these on the other end before we can make our mortise joints in the other pieces. Now one of the really important things we have to remember is we want the alignment of this and this 
to be straight. And you can eyeball that pretty well and see if it's straight. And you could always pop a string line down there if you needed to or run a string to it. Once you've got this done, now you've got one support for those front legs that you're ready to make the mortises in to fit these tenons. Now one thing that I do with these is I come in here and I just cut it off just a little bit, just like that, just like that, and just like this. Not all the way back to the shoulder, just to the front. And I'm going to cut that notch small that this mates into, that tenon, and then I'm going to lash it as well back in here. I'll show you that in a minute. We're going to put a lashing on here to hold it together. And this is green wood. It's all going to shrink. It should shrink somewhat together as long as it's the same species of wood. But if we really want this good and solid without being able to bore through holes, put pins in it, or put nails in it of some sort, we're going to have to lash it or possibly glue it. But gluing green wood is not a good idea either. So we're going to use what I call a dovetail lash on this in just a few minutes. Okay. Now... This is going to be our leg, and this is our cross support here. So we're going to want to line this up so that I've got my spacing that I want. And I'm going to lay this dovetail right in the middle of that. And then I'm going to mark with my knife, marking knife, it doesn't really matter. You can use your knife blade for this just as easy. And all I'm doing is marking where that dovetail is coming into that at. And you can see that that's an angled line. And that's important because this is a force fit joint. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this. And remember, this is an angle. So when we cut this, we want to cut it at an angle. But that's our outside line. We don't want to cut outside that. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark this with a marker so you guys can see it really good. So you understand exactly what I'm doing here. This is the outside of my joint. This is the center line of my joint. So I'm going to cut from here at an angle to here with my saw. And then I'm going to pop that notch out. And I want that notch to be about as deep as this is. We're about a little over a third of the way through the material. All right, so let's lock this dude up and saw it in. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so if we're drawing this on, we're not going to go any deeper than this. And you can see I'm touching that right now on this side and this side. And the same thing over here, about halfway down. And what I've got to take out is enough space here and here to get that dovetail in there. So I need an angle here. And that's what I'm cutting in now. So if I cut that angle here, like this, there's one side of it. This angle becomes the other side, here, like this. And then I'm going to cut right down the middle. And then I'm just going to start taking little kind of saws in between things there. And that's just going to help everything come out. That saw kerf ripping through there is going to knock a lot of that stuff out of there. Now this notch here needs to be a little wider. I can cut that with my knife or I can just cut that in with a saw real easy. Just like this. Make that just a little wider. Because I need a little bit of room for that joint to go in there. And you're just keeping out, keep taking chunks out with your saw, just like this. It's where this dry wood blade comes in real handy because you can manipulate this thing really, really well. And then look at what you're getting for a hole in there. And just widen things up where you need to. And you can always go back in there and clean it up with your knife. Now, just like any other mortise and tenon, you're going to have to come in and clean it up. You'd have to do this with a chisel and pair this up a little bit. And you can do the same thing with your knife. I would much rather have to remove material 
from this notch after the fact and have to even shear cut a little bit out of here to make it bigger to accept my tenon than to have cut too much out of here from the beginning with my saw because I definitely can't put material back. Okay, we're getting pretty close now. All right. Okay, moment of truth here. I'll lay this thing right here where you guys can see it. Get things lined up where we need them here. And I'm just tapping it from the top gently. Once you've pounded that in, go ahead and come in here with your knife, trim everything up so it's all neat and pretty much lines up with the edge, just like this. Kind of bevel it over so it matches the wood that it's in. You can shear cut back here if you need to to straighten that out. Just come down on it, take your knife in there and trim that out. Just like that. Now, at this point, you've got a pretty solid joint. No question about that. The wood's going to shrink. It's green. You can't guarantee that it's going to shrink the same amount in both directions because shrinkage is different, a lot different actually percentage-wise, in diameter opposed to length. So it's going to shrink more in the, dia in, the, in the diameter here than it's going to shrink lengthwise here. So this is probably going to get loose over time. The best way to avoid that is to lash it with what I call a dovetail lash. I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do with this is we're going to come in here with our knife or our saw. doesn't really matter. And we're going to make a small shear cut right behind this notch line right here. Just like this. doesn't have to be very deep. And then we're going to put a shelf in there almost like we cut a small steak notch in that piece of wood just like this doesn't have to be very deep at all it only needs to be deep enough to accept the string or the lashing that you're using in this case we're going to use 36 bank line so I just have a small notch right there okay to lash this dovetail I've got about a pull and a half of number 36 bank line which in my case means I've got about eight feet of it I'm going to double it over and put that doubled over portion, that bite, right in that notch. I'm not going to start with a timber hitch. I'm going to come around the bottom side and put an X right across the front of that dovetail tenon and come all the way around on both sides on the outside, just like this. Once I get to that point, I'm going to grab a frapping stick, wrap it on there, and yank down tight, as tight as I can get it. To get to that point, I'm going to come around again, across here, and out, and across here again, and out. And when I get both of those out again, and everything's neatened up, tidied up, and centered up, everything's pushed together neat, I'm gonna wrap that frapping stick again, and yank that thing down for all it's worth again. So now I'm pulling this tenon in, I'm locking the tenon in here, and because I'm hooked onto this, I'm forcing everything forward at the same time. And now I'm gonna pull down this thing really hard. Now when I come around from those two wraps over the top, I'm gonna to cross over this tenon right here and come down, just like this. I'm gonna give this thing one more good yank with the frapping stick to lock everything in. And then I'm going to clove hitch it off just like you would any other lashing. Sometimes it's difficult to manipulate that with one hand. And 
neaten that up over on the side pull it down tight over on this side do the same thing hold everything tight <clears throat> make sure you got a good X over there get between the X Again, one-handed operations. Pull it down tight. Make sure you push everything neat and tidy up against each other. So everything's nice and tight. If you can get your frapping stick around that thing where you've got that clove hitch in there, yank on that. That's even better. You should have enough tail left over to do that. Now what I generally do when I do a clove hitch is I put a stop knot in it right at the bottom. I'll snug that thing up as best as I can get it and I'll put a stop knot on that side and a stop knot on this side. Then that thing is not going to come undone. Then you can just trim off your excess. When you're done with that, you got a really, really tight joint right there. That's not going to come undone on you. Even if that wood shrinks a little bit, that's not coming undone. You'll have another crossbar down here on the bottom as well when you're done. So you'll have two crossbars across the front, two on the sides, and then two on the back, and then three going up the back of the chair. Guys, I appreciate you joining me out here today for a little refresher on how to make this woodland dovetail and the way that I lash it, I created this dovetail lash to go with this type joint so that when the material shrinks down over time, you're not going to lose the tightness of that joint. This is a really, really good way to make furniture if you don't have a lot of tools, axe, knife, saw, cordage. Travel tool heavy, carry lots of cordage, and you can do a lot of work with very few tools. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me today. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. For all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, I'm going to get back on this chair. I'll see you on the next one.